Former White House counselor Kellyanne Conway's new book is not going too well. Her 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 book tour, her book sales, uh, her memoir titled "Here's the Deal" sold just twenty five thousand copies in its first week, according to NPD Book Scan, and has already dropped to a low of one hundred and twenty six on Amazon's bestseller list. It's super super sad, especially when compared to Mary Trump's "Too Much and Never Enough." That sold about 1.3 million copies in its debut week, as well as Michelle Obama's book, selling over a million. Uh, and look, even her former boss, Donald Trump, sold about 240,000 copies of his coffee table book. So altogether, very, very sad. Joining the links, uh, likes of Meghan McCain with her incredibly poor book sales, selling just 300 uh, during her first week. I, for one, of course, am very, very thrilled that this is a complete flop. Nobody needs to hear from Kellyanne Conway. She is a horrible person. Uh, but you know what, Farron, let me uh, get your thoughts on this. Uh, I'm sure Meghan McCain is looking at this like, oh, my God, that's amazing. If only if only I could have hit this Kellyanne Conway level of sales here. But it's really funny. You know, you mentioned in your intro, you told people do not buy this book. Yes, I had said I had said the exact same thing. And I even mentioned, like, I hate to tell people don't buy books because you, you should buy books. You should read books. But reading is not. Good. Yes, reading is wonderful, but just not this one. And not only has this book been obviously picked apart by the fact checkers, you know, just so many claims in it easily verifiable that mm -hmm. those things didn't happen. But when you have Donald Trump himself coming out and saying that, hey, what you're saying in your book is an absolute lie, then yeah, that's gonna turn off the only people in this country who would be willing to buy it in the first place. Right. Like you got an unendorsement from Donald Trump. So that that's definitely gonna weigh heavily on the minds of the MAGA freaks because yeah, sure she was loyal, she was wonderful, she was also pretty much the leaker from the administration, which they don't want to acknowledge, but the boss says no. The boss says it's lies. And then even funnier than that, after he said that, she came out and defended yep. him. Say, like, she didn't defend her book. She defended him. So if you're not even willing to go to the mat for your own work, then yeah, it, it's pretty much a piece of crap at that point. Yeah, and it's funny. You mentioned that uh, he defended Trump. Here's what she, she basically called him protective in a great girl boss oh oh what a what a girl boss uh donald trump wow in, in, unless wow. you ask you know any of the women who actually worked for him yeah they, exactly. they've got different stories to tell <laughs> exactly in fact ask uh a lot of women who are even in proximity to donald trump they'll tell you some stories like for example eugene carroll she's got a story to tell and what do i uh he doesn't want to hear it though Mm, mm, mm. Yes. <laughs> but you know, I, again, no, go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, it, it just also, you talking about that brings up all of these other kind of forgotten but still ongoing stories. You know, like right. the E. Jean Carroll massive lawsuit that could prove that he sexually assaulted somebody. Mm -hmm. That we don't have a resolution to that yet. And that's just something like people, I know there's so much to think about in any given day. But there's still so many big stories out there. Like, right. please, please try not to forget about these things because they are pretty massive with big implications for the Absolutely. future of politics. And, and and let me just add in, too, because I think you're uh, you'll be personally interested in this one. You know, we, we kind of forgot about, you know, the whole Stormy Daniels thing. And then here you have Michael Avenatti <laughs> getting sentenced. I think it was, what, four years? Yep. Mm. Four years for screwing over Stormy Daniels. And yeah, um, Avenatti is uh, certainly not a fan of me, <laughs> nor I of him. He he got super mad at me one time uh, because, you know, he he went after AOC on Twitter. So I right. made a joke, a quote tweet, and I said, hey, maybe you need to worry about some of your own problems here. But yeah, very like light jabbing. Sure. Um, and then got this horrible DM from him. Uh, and then he immediately blocked me, but basically <laughs> said, I'm, I'm a joke. I'm, and, and I call myself a lawyer, which like, no, I don't, I'm not a lawyer, never have claimed to be. And then I get blocked and 
he gets thrown in jail. So, hey, it all worked out in the end. Yeah, it, it all worked out. He uh, It's funny because he was a little bit salty about that whole thing, which just kind of shows, you know, that he's a little bit of a... Beta! Beta bear! <laughs> Hopefully he enjoys his nice uh, vacation in uh, Club Fed. Um, but getting back to Kellyanne Conway real quick, uh, again, this is this is basically pitting liar versus liar at this point. You know, there are no good people in this story, so it's sort of like a let them fight situation. But some of the more famous lies that we've kind of forgotten about was the whole Bowling Green Massacre. Remember that? Alternative facts uh, coming up with that phrase. And uh, I just all the different, I, I mean, even look at some of the personal family drama with george conway and 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 uh you know uh, her daughter or their daughter and, and it's just like what a completely dysfunctional family and then they're kind of airing all their dirty laundry just all over the country <laughs> and this book i think i think people had enough of it and just were not interested in anything that kellyanne conway had to say and i and i think that's a i think that's a good thing like we need to be over this this person and a lot of these we, people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I completely agree with you on that. And and I do think that that played a big role in these pathetic sales. I mean, mm -hmm. she could not have had better free publicity exactly. for this book. I mean, it, it's not like she was only going on Fox News to promote it. She got, you know, primetime CBS, you know, going on actual network show. Yeah. So she had all of the opportunities to push this out. I mean, articles about some of the claims she made in the New York Times, Washington Post, The Guardian. Uh, I know I covered some. I'm sure you covered some as well. Oh, yeah. Like everybody was talking about this thing. But that's also part of the problem. See, all mm -hmm. those salacious claims that she made already came out. So that's another thing I told my audience, too. I was like. You don't need to buy it. If there's anything actually mm -hmm. juicy in there, there's going to mm -hmm. be an article on it that you can read for free somewhere mm -hmm. online. So don't waste your money on this garbage. Yeah, it's not, it's not even good enough to be toilet paper at this point. Exactly. And let me just add, too, this is just another book in the long line of books that have been released by former Trump officials. I mean, we pretty much know a lot of the stuff that had already happened there. And so this was, uh, I think... Uh, Another cynical, just like a lot of these other books, cash grab. Uh, and it's good to see that it actually failed in this case. And also, let me let me to uh, add one more thing. How maybe because uh, because we know that a lot of these books that get released usually get bought back by campaigns. That's what, how they end up on like the New York Times bestseller list uh, that they did not do that this time. Uh, and I think that's very telling as well. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's weird, too, because it is campaign season. You know, everything mm -hmm. is in high gear. People got lots of money to spend on their campaigns. We've seen all kinds of giveaways and raffles and whatnot. But this is just one they're like, eh, let's just go put this in the bargain bin somewhere at the back of a Barnes & Noble, maybe. Maybe somebody will pick it up. We don't want it for our campaign. We don't want anything to do with it. And Kellyanne has gone out and campaigned for people. Let's right. not forget that. It's not like, oh, well, she's not relevant to this campaign. She's been out there. She is absolutely mm -hmm. pushing certain candidates. So it would make sense for them to push this, but it's old news. I mean, it's stuff mm -hmm. that's patently false. And like you said, there's a thousand other books already from all these other people with much better, you know, juicier gossip than right. what she has to offer. So there's, there's, you put out a product that there was no demand for kind of like truth social, right? You, right? You've already got all these other alternatives. You don't need another one out there, you know, crowding the market. This is, this is capitalism speaking to Kellyanne there you saying go. thanks, but no thanks. And let me just add too, uh, one last thing. It'd be in the bargain bin along with Hillary Clinton's book from yeah. 2016. <laughs> Let's not forget about that train wreck. 